morning started out one way and ended up totally different. Whew. The title of this message is Make Me a House of Prayer. Let me catch you up on where we are. We're in the middle of a series right now called um, You Can't Shut Me Up. And I started out um, last week with praise, talking about how praise is horizontal as well as vertical. And you know how, and you know how praise goes. You know, everybody thinks, oh, we're just going to praise God, but praise is speaking well of each other, that I need you to help me praise him. I need you. I need you to be that echo chamber for me, that I can speak the goodness of the Lord, and it comes right back. Eddie, are we recording? Sweet. All right. So it, 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 come, it bounces back and forth. And then that turns to a vertical, because we're speaking well of the goodness of God. Now, this morning's message started out as your normal everyday message about prayer you know prayers of the righteous are are the effectual and favorite prayer of the righteous avails much it means it's powerful and effective prayer prayer changes things pray without ceasing and the lord told me something this week because again I've, I've had three days to put my foot up and think and the lord told me that you know we teach about prayer but what people fail to realize is that um this is going to be deep hold on to your hands um, we ask people to pray for us. Can you pray for me about this situation? Can you pray for me to get a job but won't do the legwork ourselves? Why are you going to try to outsource your prayer life? Why are you going to sit here and why are you going to have someone else do all the hard work? But yet you don't want to have the need. Because some people don't want the cost that comes with prayer. There is one thing when you're praying for agreement, praying in agreement with something with someone. There's another thing when you, can you pray for me and you haven't done any need service before you even ask them to pray for you. And God told me this. Then we're going to get to the meat of the message because it explains because it's going to connect that prayer is agreement. The Bible talks about when the one can send a thousand to fight a flight to 10,000 and then it goes from there. It goes tenfold from there. But the reality is that people don't want the cost of prayer. What is the cost of prayer? The cost of prayer is living a life that is pleasing unto God. Y'all quiet. The cost of prayer is living a life that's pleasing to God. The prayers of the righteous, not the prayers of that random person down the street. The prayers of the righteous avail much, means they are powerful and effective. And the only way those prayers can be powerful and effective is if we make ourselves houses of prayer. That's the only way this is going to work. If you make yourself a house of prayer. So I had y'all turn to Isaiah 56, 6 through 7. And we're going to go ahead and read this. And I'm reading from all the scriptures today are coming from the New King James Version. So it might sound different from what you have. Or if you got um, new versions, just switch versions. Whew. I'm late. Can you stop twitching? Okay, thanks. Um, it says, also the sons of the foreigner who join themselves to the Lord to serve him and to love the name of the Lord to be his servants. Everyone who keeps from defiling the Sabbath and holds fast my covenant. Even them will I bring to my holy mountain and make them joyful in my house of prayer. Their burnt offerings and their sacrifices will be accepted on my altar. For my house shall be called a house of prayer for all nations. Isaiah in the Old Testament, but is this is pulled from the section where he's speaking of the Gentiles. Who are the Gentiles? That'd be us. The people who are not a part of the Abrahamic covenant and how they will see salvation as well. They're talking, he's talking about Christ. The house of prayer is a is the is, the, is where the presence of God dwells therein, right? Hold, hold on to that. The house of prayer is where the presence of God dwells in. Thank you, Jesus. So in the Old Testament, the house of prayer, the place of prayer was the tabernacle. That was the place where the presence of God dwelt therein, right? 
They have the priests have to go into the presence of God. They have to, the people have to bring sacrifices to the presence of God. But we're not going to look at this as a physical building per se. Like we're sitting in this lovely gymnasium or gymnatoriatorium thing. We're sitting in this room right now, and this is this is our tabernacle. This is our meeting place. But how many of you know that you are a house of prayer? You are a house of prayer. Thank you, Jesus. I want you to go with me. Go with me. Go with me. God, have me write out one way, preach it another. Go to Ephesians. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Facebook family, we love you. God bless you. It says, Ephesians 2, reading verses 20, actually 19 through 22. Now, therefore, you are no longer strangers and foreigners, but fellow citizens with the saints and members of the household of God, having been built on the foundation of the apostles and prophets, Jesus Christ himself being the chief cornerstone, in whom the whole building being fitted together grows into a holy temple in the Lord, in whom you are also being built together for a dwelling place of God in the spirit. He is, he is literally forming us into his dwelling place. Thank you, Lord Jesus. He is forming us to be places where his, where his presence can reside therein. I got to stand up for this one. That, he, that he's making us places for his glory to reside therein. What is the foundation? The foundation is Christ. The old hymn says, on Christ the solid rock I stand, all the ground is what? Sink in sand. My hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. I dare not trust the sweetest frame, but wholly lean on Jesus' name. So I'm going to step on some toes. You might get mad at me. You might be like, Pastor Cass, I ain't come back no more. That's fine. God bless you. I love you. But I have to, t- but I have to tell you what God has been revealing to me concerning the body of Christ, that we have, be- we have not become a house of prayer. The Lord dealt with the Lord's gave me some revelation before I went to sleep last night. He said, you know, what one of the Ten Commandments is, do not use my name in vain. Yes, Lord. Go to BibleStudyTools.com, look up the scripture, click the word vain, and see what pops up. And I'm like, Lord, just tell me. He's like, you know what it is. I'm just confirming it to you because I already told you. Just you were like, I want confirmation. The word vain means Nothing. So what it says is, do not use the Lord's name for nothing, for empty reasons. If Christ is your foundation, but yet we throw up his name but not match his nature, we are using his name in vain because it's for what? Empty reasons. How can you have a hollow foundation? Because a hollow foundation won't be able to stand through the time of trial. Sand, the reason why sand is the way that it is, is because it, it's packed together in one spot. But if you put a hole in the bottom of the sandbag, what happens? So there was a man who built his house on a rock. There's another man who built his house on sand. The winds and the storm came, and what happened? The house on a rock, what happened to it? It stood. It stood. And the house on the sand, what happened to it? It fell, fell flat. Why? Because it didn't have a stable foundation. Are y'all catching what I'm, what I'm talking about? The reason why the church is, de- is in degradation and it's falling apart is because we have forgotten the foundation of the house of prayer. That the word Christian has become a moniker. Please, I'm tired of seeing these political commercials and I typically don't go here, but I need to go here because we got to get something right. Don't go on TV talking about, hi, I'm such and such. And I'm a politician. I'm a conservative Christian. So Christianity doesn't need a qualifier. I'm going to tell you what you want to hear because your foundation is not stable on the rock. Did y'all catch that? Yeah. Your foundation is not stable on the rock. But yet we sitting here praying and sweating and we, people looking like the prophets of Baal beating the mess out of them going, send the rain God, send the rain God. And God's like, I don't hear you because I can't dwell in you.
Run around the story when Elijah called fire from heaven. <laughs> Elijah had the nerve to put water all over the altar, around the altar. Every preposition that be used for the altar, he, he put water there. The prophets of Baal are running around going, give us rain, give us rain, send down fire, send, look familiar, send down rain, send down rain. I caught myself, that's all that matters. That's how, they're, that's, that's how they're looking. And they're, saying they're, they're beating themselves. They're cutting themselves. They're causing harm to themselves. And all Elijah had to do was, God, whoop. fire consumed the altar and the water and everything around it. Why? Because he had his foundation stable, solid. I'm going to tell you this now. Um, Pastor Rachel, she sent her love, by the way. Pastor Rachel and I were discussing where we're going as a church, you know. We're going to be at Pride, doing some ministry and outreach work. We have people coming in from all corners of the city. We're not stealing folk from churches. People are hunting us down. <laughs> but people know good and well what we stand for. They know good and well what we preach about, what we sing about, what we talk about. They know good and well. It's on the website. If you've never been to the website, it's nice. I made it. It's on the website. But they still come. Why? Because we tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. So help me, God. I'm not going to hell to make you feel happy. I can't. In these last and evil days, I can't do that. Because we are seeing people, and God reminded me of a message I preach, which I need to preach this at some point so y'all can get the full, full extent of it. And God said, you know that wave that I keep telling you about, that you thought was crazy, is coming. And those who don't have their foundation stable, that are not walking houses of prayer, they're not walking day and night in the presence of God. I'm not saying being weird and all, being so heavenly minded, you're, you're of no earthly girl. I ain't saying all that. I'm just saying that is your, where is your mind at? Where is your foundation at? What is keeping you stable? And if, if your house is like this, maybe you need to check your foundation. Y'all hear? Y'all good? Y'all good? Y'all quiet? Y'all was hollering last week. So let's go to Matthew, the 21st chapter. This is one of my favorite Bible stories, by the way. Jesus was at the temple kicking it, chilling. Went in there, and he saw that people were doing some things they weren't supposed to in the temple. Let's read. 21, starting at 12. Then Jesus went into the temple of God and drove out all those who bought and sold in the temple and overturned the tables of the many changers and the seats of those who sold doves. And he said to them, it is written, my house shall be called a house of prayer, but you have made it a den of thieves. Then the blind and lame came, he came to him in the temple and he healed them. Tap somebody and say, who living in your house? On top, we, we had talked to our neighbor church. Everybody say, look at somebody and say, who living in your house? Who, who, who walking in your house? We have made Christianity a commodity. I'm a part of so many groups of people are, are trying to sell. Oh, oh, you're, you're planting a church. Well, I have this $1,000 church planting program for you. And if you do this $1,000, we'll give you $20,000 to start a church. I'm like, do I look like I have $1,000? Like, do I, do I, do I, do I look, do I look rich? My father is rich in houses and lands, but I'm, I'm, I'm rich. I'm believing for my wealth. Amen. We have turned it into a commodity. We've turned it into a name that you can freely use. And God's like, oh my God, I'm like, Lord, why, why, why am I going to be the one to say this? Because I see the pastor cast you. You slipping, pastor. You, you talking against some things. Yes, exactly, because I need to. 
That's my job. I don't draw a salary from the church because one, I got a job, and two, I don't want to be bound to make you happy. I don't want to be bound to make you feel good. It's not my job. It's my job to shepherd you. And sometimes I got to pull out the crook and go, come on back. And it's my job as a prophet to sometimes be like, come on back. We have turned the relationship of God with God into a commodity. And we're wondering why our prayers are hindered. It's because of the condition of your heart. The Holy Spirit cannot dwell in you because there's, uh, there's squatters in the house. And the thing is, if a squatter squats too long, they have legal right in the house. So you literally have to go through the eviction process to get them out. So we've done let squatters in the house and wonder why the church is falling apart. We, we, have, we have let infiltrators, people who are, not supposed to, who are not on the lease in the house, and then wonder why they ain't there. I have legal right because you let them sit too long. People have, people have sat in their sin and their mess too long, and people have told them, oh, it's okay. It's okay. We have people who come here who want the truth, who want to be free. Or we just super judge them and kick them out. So that way, that thing that is inside of them takes a deeper root because the hurt caused it to grow. Sometimes you need some mess to make some things grow. And the mess that we throw out the church has caused things to grow to a level that it should not be because we have not taken dominion over it. We ran it out. We yelled at folk. Had arguments. All because we felt that we were right. Yes, Jesus put people in check. He did. He did it quite well. His shade was quite good. But he still loved them. How can you call yourself a house of prayer when what comes out your mouth is hate? I should not be arguing with pastors about doing the right thing. I should not be arguing with pastors and worship leaders about why should we reach out to our brothers and sisters of different colors all because you feel uncomfortable because the Holy Spirit's checking you. That's the reality of this. We've allowed the money changers in the house. We've allowed the money changers in the body and wonder why stuff can't get through. Why God is not pleased. Because you have given legal right to the mess that you're in. But I thank God that he sent Jesus to come and redeem all of it. That his death was not in vain. It wasn't empty. It wasn't for nothing. It was to assure you salvation and freedom. I don't care how long you've been saved, or how long you've been in the church, but if your fruit don't look like God, guess what? I need you to go back and check your salvation. If, there, if the fruit of your tree is not producing good things, if you're producing lemongranates, I'm going to tell you how to grow a lemongranate. You can actually do this at home. Get one of those plastic like pill capsules, take a lemon seed, a pomegranate seed, plant it, wait, a few, wait like 200 days, and it comes and you cut it open. It looks like a lemon. Open it up. It looks like a pomegranate. When you mix what is godly and what is worldly, you try to put it together, you're going to get a hybrid that doesn't work. Why am I going here? God, why am I going here? We have to get the squatters out. Not in the natural, but in the spiritual. You got to get them out. I don't care how many rallies, how many revivals that we have. If the spirits that, have, that you have taken partnership and ownership with to try to put you under subversion of the, of, of, subversion of the enemy are not taken out, it ain't going to matter at all. I know that's bad English, but it's a good word. That it's, it, it's not going to matter. It's not going to matter. Because God is looking for dwelling places. God, I thank you for my healing. I thank you for my healing. He's looking for dwelling places. Do you not know that you are the temple of the Holy Spirit? 
that you are the dwelling place of God? Has no one told us that we are the dwelling places of the Holy Spirit? That he lives in us. And he does not long for a dirty temple. God is a God of beauty, symmetry, and order. And we wonder why things are in such disarray because we have gotten into disorder. We have gotten into dysfunction and made dysfunction our home as the body of Christ. And I am speaking to every church in the United States of America that you need to check yourself before you wreck yourself. For the very freedom that you try to hold on so dearly to might be taken from you from the very actions that you have done. No more thousand people country clubs. No more big old hype up rallies. No more dead religion. God's looking for houses of prayer. He's looking for people that he can dwell in and use for his glory. That they may not be perfect, but as we walk through this journey to being perfected by the power of the Holy Spirit, I don't ask you to be perfect, I ask you to just walk right. Because none of us are going to make perfection. We're being perfected, we're in the process. We're in the process. I don't need you to be, I just be in the process and love each other. We will not be another church that worships their building more than the God who gave it to them. We're not going to be that. We're not going to be a place to where if you're in, you're in. If you're out, you're out. God is looking for houses of prayer. He dwelling places. Quit looking for a Holy Ghost high and start seeking an inhabitation. You get your Holy Ghost high, you good for about two, three weeks, and it wears off. So y'all go get another Holy Ghost high. I'm sorry, I'm not your dealer. <laughs> I, can't, I can't be your dealer. But an impartation will take you from glory to glory to glory. But are you a house of prayer? Can the Holy Spirit say that he dwells, that, he, that you are his address, he can come in, or is he knocking on the door? I stand on the door and knock. Today, when you hear my voice, heart, not your heart. He wasn't saying that. The Bible wasn't talking about the unbeliever. It was talking about the believer. I'm knocking on the door of your heart. You can't do this halfway. I'm here. I won't keep knocking till you let me in. This is real. This is real. God sent me and Rachel down here not to have just another church in Lancaster, but to show forth the Spirit of God to be a hub of revival. I'm not talking about roll around on the floor, you get a Holy Ghost high, but real, tangible revival, which is personal change, which, which, which will, that that will help you go out and change people personally. Times, I, the time for games is over. We can jump around and holler all we want. This stuff is real. 
the bulk of our ministry time in the city has been deliverance ministry. I don't seek it out. It shows up. Right? I'm not like talking to John going, oh, John, we're going to get some people delivered today. He's like, okay, Cass, let's go ahead and start doing it. It does. We don't go looking for it. It shows up. It finds us. Because this is real. This is real. Mama D said, what are we called to do? Heal the sick. Raise the dead. Cast out demons. But the thing is, Beelzebub cannot cast out Beelzebub. So what you need to have, the Holy Spirit inside of you. (sighs) Jesus. Facebook, this is where I'm going to leave you. I know this is a short video to normal. But we're praying for you. If you watch this message and you're like, Pastor Cass.